We're going to continue our installation of the wall switch on the second floor now. I set a wall switch in the uh, where it's going to be mounted and we have the door frame in here so you can see that it's right alongside the molding of the door. Uh, to actually do it though we need to remove that door uh, so that we can work with the uh, wires coming in to the opening of the doorway and then we can put the door frame over the wires and conceal them completely. You can see that I already have drilled the eighth inch holes in the uh, wall here for the switch to be mounted in there. And uh, we need to be able to take the wires that we have soldered onto the uh, light switch and bring them to a point where they're going to actually turn on and off the individual lights. I showed you on the first floor using the little uh, finger drill to be able to drill the hole over to the switch and then we can bring the wires into the door frame. You can't use a regular drill and go at an angle you need something like the finger drill or what I used on this one because I actually am wanting to go all the way over to the wire over here uh, to pick up the, the, the red side of the light. This runs up to the light in the ceiling and we're going to activate it with the switch to turn that on. I needed to go a lot further than what that finger uh, drill will be able to do. So I came up with a way to be able to drill from all the way on the outside. I made a gauge that keeps my drill perpendicular and I just took a 2 by 6 piece of wood, drew a line up 4 inches from the floor and then I have my drill press and I drilled a hole from the very center point following it out to the end over here. The dado that's in the center is 3 eighths of an inch and that's the exact width of the plywood uh, wall that's on here. I now can just set this block right on the edge here. When I take my drill bit I can go in and I hook it up to my Dremel of course, and I can just go ahead and start drilling. And that's lined me up both perpendicular and horizontal so that it's going to go straight through the door. When I come through the opening on the door, that gives me a range where I can line up the center of the next wall unit and just keep on going until I get all the way to where I need to be. This also works real well on the uh, ceilings. Where I came up with the idea was someone that wanted me to put in a ceiling fan and the house was completely furnished. They had hardwood floors on the, on the flooring so I couldn't run anything on the floor. The ceilings were all finished. Uh, the only option I had was to try and drill through the uh, plywood uh, and I had a little bit of trouble doing it. Uh, so I came up with a block that lines me up perfectly. The other thing is I have a piece of tape that I have put onto the uh, drill so that I know where I need to stop and I just measure the distance to where the drill is going to end to make sure that it goes past the uh, electrical flat tape uh, that's on the wall here where I need to have the hole come in. The other thing is we did on the first floor there, um, we take a magnet to find out where the drill ends. It works real well with this bigger drill bit and it actually centers exactly where we are. So you can see that uh, the magnet catches there and we're right dead center on the line that I drew uh, previously. I generally will drill this hole first and then line up for the two eighth inch holes for the uh, wall switch later on. But I wanted to make sure that we were all the way over to the uh, flat tape run and you can see that the magnet lines up perfectly 
with the tape run so we know that we have our hole far enough to be able to go. I actually went just a little bit further <laughs> uh, with it so that I'm about the middle point of the, the flat tape. Now that we have the hole in there, what we need to do is to take our uh, switch and determine where the wires are going to go to make all of the lighting work. Since we had previously wired a lot of the dollhouse, I had to work with what we had already set up. And this is true for a lot of the things. If we knew that we were going to put in the uh, lights or the switches in here when we were planning our wiring initially, uh, we could have planned a little bit better. But it's not really a problem. We've got plenty of access. We have a line that's running on the floor uh, that's electrified, and we have the uh, strip all the way around the room here that's electrified. We just need to find sections to that are running to the, the lights that we want to control with the switch. This room switch, uh, we're going to control the light up on top here and then we also want to control the baseboard light so we want to be able to turn on and off this uh, uh, floor lamp with one of the switches and with the first switch we want to uh, turn on and off the ceiling light. On this side of the room we have the other switch that we're going to be putting in and that likewise is going to go up to the ceiling light and I put the other one to turn on the uh, wall sconce that we have over there. We previously wired this ceiling light with the micro jacks and it comes with a flat tape and I ran it all the way over to this edge here where we could run the wires down the face. Uh, but as I had said earlier, the black is left alone. The only thing that we're going to be cutting and uh, activating with our switch is the red. So I brought a piece of wire from this strip that had been cut out before and I soldered it onto the red of the flat tape that's going to the light. Now if I touch this end to a positive uh, area, the light will come on. That is active. What I decided to do is to just bring it down here, put it into the hole that we drilled from this wall, and bring it into the doorway, door frame here, and then we'll tie it into the side of the switch that we need to from this side. This wire will come out of that hole and then tie into this wire that's there. Let's look at what we did on the floor um, for being able to get this ceiling light and to be able to get this floor lamp going. What we had originally is it ran across the floor, up the wall, and then across the ceiling. So this is all live. We want to cut the wire at some point and then work it through the switch. So I went ahead and cut the wire down here at the base and I can just pull this out and you can see that both this light and that light went off. Now I'm, I'm going to wire uh, our switch to be positive. It's going to go this direction is why we drilled the hole all the way and we'll come out here and I'll solder uh, it to the red wire on here. I also need to cut the wire or this uh, tape wire someplace along here so that when the switch is on, it's causing the electricity to go up and turn on just this light that's over there. So let's take our razor blade and I'm just going to go ahead and just cut this right there. And we'll come up to center and then peel across. And now that broke the electrical connection that we have uh, with the grommet that's going into the red 
run on here so that when we connect our switch to here, it will provide the red or the hot side up to our light and our light should come on. It's going to utilize the black that's already connected on that edge. For the uh, floor light, we want the other side of that switch to activate this run that's on here. And so what I want to do is to take the other wire, run it down, and we'll solder it right here. On this side, we have the ceiling light, which we already explained. The red wire is going to come down here, and we'll connect that wall switch uh, on one side with this wire. And the other side, we want to go there. It's going to come through here, and it's going to be soldered onto the red terminal that's right here. However, if you notice the light is on right now, we need to disconnect the red at this point here because it is live going across from the connection that's on here, which is already active. So I need to come up here and just make a cut and our light should go off. And then when we put our switch in here, we'll be all set. Now to be able to get all of those wires lined up going the right way, quite often I will run in a separate uh, wire and solder it to the wire that's on our switch and then feed it back into the hole. So I'm going to take a few seconds and we're going to go ahead and run the wires to be able to pull everything through. So we have start with the one that's back here and we'll just see if we can look at that. It came right through. So I can now solder the wire that we have on here and be able to pull it out and then solder it to that point that's on there. Our bottom one, I made uh, a connection from this which is live on the floor I made a connection with a single piece of uh, flat tape wire and I have a solder point on the inside frame of the doorway right here so this common from that switch and the other switch need to come down here to give us uh, the common uh, power uh, on the, on the sw two switches so I need to have a single wire and I can take common connection on this switch and I'm just going to run it through the hole to this side we can go ahead and take the common wire first I'm taking from both switches I've put the one through the hole at the bottom from the left side. I've stripped the end of that wire. I've uh, take the second switch that's going to go on this side, find the common connected wire, and we want to put both of them so that I can pull them through the, the hole together. I'll start with this one. And I'm just going to wrap it so it's coming that direction, and we'll take the other side of the tail and then I'll take the other one because we're pulling from this way I want to tie them in a straight line or as straight of a line as I can so that they don't interfere with each other in the knots doing a single one is a lot easier than to try to do two together And 
And then we're going to solder those so they don't come loose. Clean my tip. There, I think we got them. So we're going to be pulling this wire. So we want to line these both up so it comes as a straight line. And then we'll go ahead and pull and kind of help them. And we can go ahead and cut out those two off. And there we've got both of those lined up. Now this one goes over here to the center. So we want that to be, that'll be turning on the ceiling light. So we want that to be switch uh, number one, which is this one right here. So we want to tie those two wires together. A straight run. And we'll solder those. this little tail on here first so it doesn't bind up anywhere and there we've got that one through there I'll go ahead and just leave it because it's all by itself. I think you can see that one. We have only one more on this. That's going to go wired down here, so it just comes across this way. And that switch is basically ready to be pulled in tight and we can glue it in place but let's get the wires lined up from the other side we have the common already done on that side let's switch see if you can see it better from this side we have the two switches this one is the one on the, this is the one on the left side which we want for the ceiling light which is going to tie into the one that came in from here so we just need to bring it actually both of them I believe need to go through that hole so let's just twist these two together and then we'll try and find which one's which well let's do another little trick this is the left one Let's take a marker and mark this one black so we know that that's the first switch that goes to the ceiling.
Now that we have that mess all in there, we can go ahead and pull the wires taut. I'm going to go ahead and glue those switches on. And then we'll go wire all of them individually to where they belong. I'm going to go ahead and do it. And then we'll turn the cameras back on and we'll show you exactly what I have done. It took me a lot longer than I thought it would to be able to get these wires all hooked up and to get pulled in and so forth. So I went ahead and I wired almost everything. Let's go over and I'll show you exactly what I have done. You can see that I've uh, glued the uh, wall switches in place and I use quick grip for the glue, um, which I get at uh, Walmart. So I've pulled all of the wires as tight as I could from every place that they came out and then pushed it in place, put some glue on the back of it and set it so that it would be good and straight. Did the same thing on the other side so that we've got both of those are in place and soldered. I then have a bunch of wires that were coming out of the, the hole here and we had the one that came over to the back side here. I have taken and taken each of the leads that we needed to. I brought that one over here, pulled it through the hole, laid it across the red wire uh, connection on the flat tape, soldered it in place and we can cut off this little tail. The ones that are down here, the, the common one that I tied two of them together came all the way down to the bottom and uh, we soldered it to that point. The other uh, switch um, on the left side here was to turn on the uh, sconce that's there which was soldered to this point down there. I can cut that wire. The one for the light in this room uh, comes out and goes up, over, and down through the hole that we drilled from this side and then ties into the strip up on the ceiling uh, so that we should be able to have everything in line. When we put the door frame in, all the wires are concealed behind there and if I take so if I do it with a stick, you can see it better. Take and throw this switch on. We get the ceiling light. Right there, it does come on and off. Go back to our wall switch. The other one was to turn on the floor light back here. So if I hit that back switch, it turns on the floor light. If I pull it back down again, you can see we can turn it on and off with the floor switch, with the second switch that's on there. Go over to this room over here, and the first switch was supposed to turn the ceiling light on. And if I come on here and throw that up, I think you could see the light going in there, but I'll bring the camera over and show you that that ceiling light when I throw the first switch goes off and then comes on. And the other one was to turn the sconce on and off over here. And if I hit the second switch, bring it up and our sconce comes on and I can turn the sconce off. That wraps it up. It was a long video and it took a little bit longer than I thought it would be, uh, but it isn't that difficult. All you need to do is remember that you're only uh, breaking the red uh, power side going to the switch and you are then taking the other wire going into the switch up to the light that you want to turn on and off. The hardest part was determining how we run the wires to conceal them all. And we did it a couple of different ways. We showed you that we could do it with a groove on the one side of the wall, or we could drill holes through the center of the plywood. Uh, 
I wish you luck on, on doing it. It's a fun project. Just takes a little bit of patience and a little bit of time, but it certainly is not difficult to do.